You ready? You good? Transformers, not the movie. A transformer is a way of turning one voltage into another voltage. The voltage that comes out of our plugs is about 120 alternating current. It's actually around 113.4, and so some textbooks will call it 120 as a nice round number. Some books will call it 110 as a nice round number. I've usually called it 120 volts. But that's not the voltage that's in the power lines. In the power lines, it's around 20,000 volts on the telephone poles. And that's not the voltage that's in the big steel three or four story going over the mountain power lines. Those ones are often at 500,000 volts. Why, why do we have these different voltages? Oh, and not only that, 120 volts comes out of my plug. I'm telling you, my projector doesn't use 120 volts. My computer doesn't use 120 volts. It uses far less than that. Why? Well, it turns out it is very, very, very easy to turn one type of voltage into another type of voltage. And you do that using a device called a transformer because it transforms one voltage to another. How does it work? What you do is you have some kind of an iron core. The reason you're going to use an iron core is when you touch a magnet to something that's iron, the iron itself also becomes magnetic. So this amplifies the magnetic field. And what you do is you hook up, I'm going to mark up this diagram, don't write this down. You hook up the primary source to an alternating current. What that's going to do in my right hand rule, it's going to set up a magnetic field pointing up, pointing down, pointing up, pointing down, pointing up, because point, it's alternating current. You're going to get a magnetic field going this way, then this way, then this way, then this way, very, very fast, oscillating very, very fast. And what that means is in this secondary coil, you have a changing magnetic field, you have a changing flux. You will induce a current. It's a way to transfer current from one device to another device without actually having any electrons flow between them. These are insulated wires, so no electrons are going to flow through this iron to get there. You're purely inducing a current in the secondary. Ah, but not only that, it turns out that it's very easy to get the mathematical relationship. The mathematical relationship is purely related to the number of turns of wire you put around each side. Let me give you an example. Let's suppose you have four volts coming in, and let's suppose that this has 10 turns of wire. Supposing you want 12 volts on the other end, you just need 30 turns of wire times by three times by three. Or let's suppose you want a smaller voltage. Let's suppose you want uh, two volts on the other end. Five turns of wire will do it. It gives us complete control. Now, there are some restrictions. This does not work for direct current, because a direct current would have a constant magnetic field pointing in one direction. And we said magnetic fields don't induce current. Changing flux, changing magnetic fields, induce current. And this is one of the reasons why, even though many of our electric devices like direct current, our entire electronic infrastructure is all alternating current. Transformers work very nicely when you have a changing flux. So read along with me. It says this. The input side is usually called the primary, P for primary. The output side is usually called the secondary, S for secondary. And it works as follows. An alternating current produces a sine wave current. Fair enough. You don't need to know the sine wave part, but you should underline that we do need alternating current for this to work. And this is the only time all year that we really look at alternating current. In other words, I can't have a battery running this. I can, but I need to do a clever circuit. We'll talk about that later. The changing current produces a changing magnetic field, or as we've said, a changing flux in the primary. And that magnetic field goes through the iron core, and it goes through the secondary. And through that secondary, you have a changing magnetic field, hey, hey, a changing flux, which will induce a voltage and induce a current. Would a transformer work with DC current? I'm going to add a little star. Unless we manually 
flicked the current on and off. So there is a workaround. If you give me a battery, a direct current, well, by flicking a switch on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, that's not quite alternating current, but it sort of is, because for the split second, for the split second, for the split second that you open it, while the current is going from zero to max, that's a changing flux. Then as soon as it's maximum, though, now you have a constant flux, no induced voltage, no induced current. But then when you open the switch again, the current goes from max to zero, and you have a split second of an induced voltage and induced flux. So will it work with the direct current? No. If you have a switch, you'll induce a voltage for the split second while the switch is being opened and for the split second while the switch is being closed. Once it's open or once it's closed, you get nothing. But it can be done. It says, using principles of physics, explain your answer. DC means no change in flux. <clears throat> With that caveat, Matt, that, okay, physically I could switch it off. So I'm fibbing a bit. There are workarounds, but it's much easier just to have an alternating current. It takes care of itself. We find many transformers in our homes since most of our household appliances don't work with 110 volts coming out of the plug. Computers, radios, TVs, they all have transformers within their cases. If you plug anything in and you notice the plug itself or somewhere on the cord, there is one of these little boxes. That's a transformer. So that's a transformer. Or when you plug it in, if you have one of those big, huge Uber, there's a transformer in there. So if, you have, if the plug looks like one of those things, transformer. Okay. Uh, also, probably there's a device in there that changes it from alternating current to direct current. We can build those too. We won't talk about that this year. But we're very clever with circuits. Uh, also, though, the uh, power poles, those big barrel shapes that you see, those are transformers. Those are stepping down the power that's running through the power lines at probably 5,000 or 20,000 volts, stepping it down to the 120 volts that your house wants. Or the uh, sheet metal, green sheet metal BC hydro boxes that you see on the ground, those are transformers as well. That's in locations and subdivisions where the power lines have been buried under the ground. Okay, so transformers are also seen on power poles or within green metallic enclosures at ground level. BC Hydro uses them to step down from the thousands of volts that we transmit electricity at to the 110 volts they supply to our homes. Of course, this also begs the question, Jordan, why wouldn't they just have everything at 110 volts in the power lines themselves? We'll talk about that later today, too. Turn the page. Here is the transformer equation. So I did an example with you where I said it's straight one-to-one -one number ratios. Uh, here's traditionally how it's written. The secondary voltage divided by the primary voltage has to equal the number of coils on the secondary divided by the number of coils on the primary. In other words, AJ, if you want the primary to become four times as big, the number of coils has to become four times as big. If you want the sec primary voltage, if you want the secondary voltage to be 10 times bigger, you better have 10 times more coils. Or smaller, hey, if you want the secondary to be 10 times smaller, have 10 times fewer coils. Now, that's part of the formula on your formula sheet, except we can also relate current now, power equals VI. Power is measured in what? Watts. Okay. If you're shipping a limited amount of power, as voltage gets bigger, what would happen to the current if you're stuck with the same amount of power? If voltage goes up, what must current do? Go down. Uh, what that means is, even though in the equation secondary voltage is on the same level as secondary number of coils and primary voltage is on the same level as primary number of coils, for current, it's reciprocal. The primary is on top, secondary is on the bottom. There's three equations in one here. We only match two at a time. So you can also, though, for what it's worth, 
Amanda, use this to find out uh, what your output current is, secondary current is going to be, or what your input current needs to be. But it's also a trade-off. If voltage goes up, you're going to get a smaller current. If voltage goes down, you're going to get a bigger current. Okay. Example two. Suppose we want to step voltage up from the 12 volts in our car battery to the 11,000 volts used by spark plugs. This is, by the way, how car battery of 12 volts can run all the electric devices in your car, because we have transformers. We have an induction coil, and that induction coil has 100 turns on the primary. How many turns does there need to be on the secondary? OK. We would say this. Secondary voltage divided by primary voltage equals secondary number of coils divided by primary number of coils or turns. What do they want us to find here? Secondary turns. Secondary NS. So we should have everything else. What's the secondary or output voltage that we want? Read the question. What's the input voltage from a car battery? 12. We'd like to know how many coils of wire we need to put in the induction coil that we're building for the car. How many coils do we have originally? 100. Hey, Mr. Duick, is this grade 8 cross multiply? Yes, we're going to finish physics 12 with grade 8 cross multiply. It's the great circle of math, Simba, the great circle of math. Um, it's going to be, by the way, remember for cross multiply, it's the two numbers that you know diagonally, you multiply those, divide by the one that's diagonally from the variable, right? Spotted that shortcut. It's going to be 100 times 11,000 divided by 12. I don't think this will work out evenly. It'll be close. How many coils of wire are we going to need to put in our induction coil? Ninety-one thousand seven hundred, roughly, yeah. turns of wire. I, I wrote a little note here. By the way, a car battery is direct current, but an ingenious circuit regularly interrupts the flow of current. Hey, what do we call that thing in your car that turns a direct current into alternating current? Take a guess. No. Who's in mechanics? This is what it does. It has the name. Joel. The alternator. So all it does, it's, it's, it takes the direct current from the battery, says we need to somehow turn this into alternating current, and it does it through a cleverly rotating system. Okay. And that then gives you your changing flux and get, you get your uh, induced voltage. Little note, this is important. Put a star next to this box. Transformers that increase voltage are called step-up transformers. Transformers that decrease voltage are called step-down transformers. Now, this is important. A step-up transformer increases the voltage, lowers the current. A step-down transformer lowers the voltage, increases the current. So I'm going to put a little note here in brackets. Step-up lowers secondary current. Step-down raises secondary current, because when one goes up, the other one goes down. It's just that we decided we would, refer, we would refer to step up and step down transformers based on what they do to the voltage, not to the current. Also, because a step up transformer has more coils, so that's also a way to think of step up. A step down transformer, the secondary, has fewer coils. But this is a lovely electric device. Oh, by the way, uh, oh, no, I haven't showed you the circuit diagram yet. I will in a second. Uh, th this really gives us, Joel, complete control. Any voltage you give me, I can turn it into any voltage that I want. Uh, as long as you give me an alternating current. So, oh, well, no, wait a minute. We just said there's ways to turn direct current into alternating current. 
So an example three, an ideal transformer has 160 turns of wire in the primary, 800 turns of wire in the secondary. The primary circuit is connected to 120 volts. What is the EMF across the secondary winding? Is it a step up or step down? What's this want me to find? So secondary EMF, that's another word for what? Sec it wants me to find secondary voltage. So I'm going to go uh, Vs over Vp equals Ns over Np. And I guess what I'm trying to find is that puppy there, which means hopefully I know everything else. By the way, you could algebraically get Vs by itself. It's grade 8 cross-multiplying. I just stick in the numbers and plug and chug because I've done cross-multiplying in trig, in ratios, in frac. I've done it for so long. So uh, Vs, what's the primary source voltage? Read the question. 120. Double check, is it AC or DC? I made sure of that. I won't try and trick you on the written question with a DC question. I might on the multiple choice. How many turns of wire on the secondary? 800. 800. How many turns of wire in the primary? I think this will work out evenly. I think the secondary voltage is going to be 120 times 800 divided by... 160, it's going to be 120 times 800 divided by 160. 600 volts. Callum, what was my initial source voltage? What was my secondary voltage? Step up or step down? By the way, what could you say about my secondary current? Smaller even though step up is smaller current. I didn't give you any information about the current, so we can't handle that. Example four. So here is uh, how we draw a transformer in a circuit. Here is my high tech. Uh, by the way, this, the, to draw, to show that it's an alternating current source, what you do is you do a circle with a little sine wave through it like that. That's alternating current as opposed to a battery. And to show a transformer, what you do is you have loops like this. And then you have loops like this. And you show the two circuits aren't actually connected. There's no electrons flowing from one side to the other. Instead, what you're inducing is a magnetic field and inducing a current. For what it's worth, in case you wanted to know, there's the circuit drawing for a transformer. OK. What's this want me to find? Unknown current, unknown voltages. You know what? Let's do the voltages here. Uh, voltage secondary over voltage primary equals N secondary over N primary. And we'll do current over on the right-hand side. Which voltage are they asking me to find, secondary or primary? Secondary? OK. So that's going to be uh, Vs over, what's my primary, 120? Equals Ns, 120, over... 30. Cross multiply, 120 divided by 34. 480? Double check me. Yep. I'd show the work, but I'm running out of room here. But 480 volts? Yep. Step up or step down? Because voltage is what decides. Step up. I'll circle step up. Now, current. I could use the voltages, AJ, to find the current, but did I just solve for voltage? I don't want to use a possible wrong answer to find another wrong answer. I'll use ends to solve for current. Now, how do ends relate? Ends end up being uh, secondary N over primary N, but for current, it's opposite. It's going to be primary on top, secondary on the bottom. And this is what's on your formula sheet. What are they asking me to find? Secondary current. OK. Uh, 120 over 
30 equals primary, 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 2 over secondary. Do you get 0.5? Yep. Yeah? Yep. Am I losing you? I, some of you are like, huh? Sean, you okay? Point, right? It's going to be 2 times 30 divided by 120 because it's always multiply the 2 that you know diagonally, divide by the 1 that's diagonally across from the variable. It's also stuff moves diagonally. That moves to the top, that moves to the bottom, that moves to the top. Whichever way you want to think about it, Matt. Uh, 0 0.50, I'll go to 2 sig figs amps. Try B on your own. I'll do it up here. Let's see if we get the same thing. My secondary voltage is bigger, it's a step-up transformer. Next page. Um, is that okay, Brie, your question? Good. Find the secondary voltage and current. You know what? Try C and D on your own. I'm going to freeze the screen. By the way, this is a great written question on your test. For three marks, find the secondary voltage. For three marks, find the current. For one mark, step up or step down, there's a lovely seven mark question. Ta-da! In other words, I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. And this will be your test that you're going to write, not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, the 17th. Okay, I'll freeze the screen. Let's see if we get the same thing. This right, Mr. Duick? No, I wrote this down wrong. what I got for C.
got singing coming from the back row there. Perhaps it could wait. Thank you. Unless you were singing a science nerd song. I didn't think so. Seventy-five divided by five is fifteen, so seventy point five divided by five is gonna be one point five. I got that. Is that all right? <coughs> so transformers, hey, you know what? I'll give you three things, find the fourth. Either number of coils or voltage or current. It's kind of a nice one to end on, probably in terms of the mathematics, about as clean as we've gotten all year long. It's grade eight. But it has a huge implication. This is why we ship power at high voltage, okay? So transformers are essential to the long distance transmission of electricity. An example can illustrate why. Suppose a generator has one million watts of power to ship. So suppose we want to ship one megawatt. Now, this is a strange circuit. We have, here's our generator shipping one million watts. Here's the receiving tower. There is no resistor between them. Well, actually, the wire itself is the resistor between them. So if we were drawing a circuit, the wire itself would be the squiggly line. And we've always ignored resistance in wires, but in real life, AJ, they have resistance, okay? So we've got a couple of possibilities. Suppose we ship it at 5,000 volts. Well, current is power divided by V. I would have to ship it at, oh, 200 amps. <clears throat> now, how much power would be lost in the wires themselves? Well, the power lost in the wires themselves is I squared R. R, the resistance of the wires. I, the current that's in the wires. And if you go I squared, 200 squared, times R, where uh, R is 10, you find that you lose 400,000 of your million watts. You lose 40% of your power. Or, alternatively, Callum, we could ship it at 500,000 volts. Now, if I do that, now my current is only, in the wire is only 2 amps. My power loss, I squared R, is 2 squared times 10 is 40 watts. I keep 999,996 watts. Or it's 99.996% uh, efficient, which, Matt, in the real world, that's as close as we'll ever get to 100% efficient. We say, woohoo! This is why we ship power at high voltage. High voltage means low current means less friction in the wires, less heating up of the wires. It means when the voltage arrives on the other end, we've got almost all of that energy, almost all of that power to ship still. So it's worth us building an infrastructure to ship in the big power lines, half a million volts, 500,000 volts, in the smaller power lines, 20,000 volts, and then transformers to step it down to our household current, and then transformers to step down that voltage to whatever instrument we want to plug it into. Well worth it, okay? So in order to minimize power loss in transmission lines, Seb, voltage produced at the generator is stepped up to higher voltages, easy to do, transformer. Typically 500,000 volts before transmitting the power. The step, in, uh, the step up in voltage is accompanied by a step down in current. Couple of examples. Suppose the Duick Hydroelectric Company decides to ship 150,000 watts over two ohm transmission lines at 20,000 volts. How much power is lost? Okay, 
Well, power is v times i, which means that i equals power over v. So I guess the current is going to be 150,000 watts of power divided by 20,000 volts of power. You know what? I'll be shipping it at 7.5 amps. Now, how much power is lost? I can't use power equals vi because that's talking about the ends. I want to know how much power is lost in the wires themselves. Power lost in the wire itself is I squared R because that includes R, the resistance of the wire. It's going to be 7.5 squared times 2 squared times 2 we're going to lose 112.5 watts. How much do we keep? Well, 150,000 minus 112.5. So we keep 149,887. 149,887.5. Watts is what we keep. You okay with that, Joel? So far, so good? So how efficient is this? Well, Ryan, remember our symbol for efficiency was that funky M. Efficiency is, uh, well, way back when I said power out divided by power in. You know what? I'm going to say this time it's power keep divided by power shipped. AJ, it's the smaller number divided by the bigger number. It's 149,987.5 divided by 150,000. And I find, divided by 150,000, that's one too many zeros, Mr. Duick, and then times by 100% to change it into a percentage. And semi, lo and behold, I find, doing it this way, 99.9% .9 efficient. And again, you don't get much better than that in the universe. You really don't. We could ship it at a lower power, say 560 volts. Ship it at a lower voltage. What would that do? Well, what would the current be? Power divided by voltage. 150,000 divided by 560. Two hundred and sixty-eight amps. What would the power lost be? Well, that's I squared R. It's going to be 268 squared times the resistance of the wires is only 2 ohms. These are good wires, a small resistance. Squared times 2. Yeah. I'd lose 143, you know what? 143,500 watts of power. Those wires would be glowing red hot. Birds that landed on them would get burned, not from electricity because they're not grounded. They would get burned the same way when you touch a stove element, you get burned. 143,000. How much is kept? 150,000 minus 143,000. We're keeping 6,500 watts. How efficient is this? Well, we're keeping 6,500. We started with 150,000. Try that again. 6,500 divided by 150 times 100. Yeah, this is 4.3% efficient. That's about as low as we ever want to get.
So Matt, this is why. There was a big debate at the turn of last century. Thomas Edison had the patents for direct current and he wanted our entire electric infrastructure to be direct current. Nikola Tesla said alternating current is the way to go. And this is why, he was right, he was right. Thomas Edison, uh, if we had gone with a direct current to ship it across the country, you need to put a booster station about every four kilometers anywhere wires were going. You can imagine financially how much that would cost society. Uh, Edison had the patents on those booster stations, so you can imagine financially why he was so interested. Edison was really a SOB, like really a jerk. Uh, he was notorious, uh, he, you know, all these inventions, actually many of them were discovered by people that worked for him, but the contract that you signed was, if you invented it, he got the credit. Uh, I told you the elephant story, right? Yeah. right? So he shocked a live elephant to death in front of, and you can find the video on YouTube, I'm not gonna go look for it, but it's there. Alternating current, yes, will kill an elephant, so will direct current, what do you think is running through your stuff? Anyways, so, that's why we ship power at high voltage. Step it down, step it down, and step it down. Ta-da! Finish the course. What's your homework? Well, you can certainly try number three. Number six. You can try number seven. Number seven is putting everything together. You're going to have to use transformers, first of all, to figure out what voltage you're sending through the wires. And then the wires have a resistance of uh, 120 ohms. Okay, see if you can figure that one out. But really, 